Well, what do you know? I have a light drizzle. I have mild temperatures. The orchids are outside getting some rain. That is incredible. <laughs> Hi, welcome to this video. This is not about my weather conditions, but I am loving it. <laughs> Thank you though for clicking on this video. I do appreciate the time you spend on my channel. I say it a lot, but I mean it every single time. Today's video will address a request from Schmel Lai asking for an in-depth guide to caring for the different genuses of orchids in semi-hydro. Well, how much time have you got? <laughs> this is right up my alley, but I'm gonna stay within the subject matter and not go off on a tangent. And there are timestamps in the description so that you can pick and choose how you want to go about getting the information in long form or short form. Quick disclaimer though, I am not going to discuss the different grow environments in this video. This video is about different genuses of orchids in semi-hydro. Whether you are growing in a controlled environment, which includes windowsill or alfresco, a combination of both, supplementing light or not, etc., etc., this video will not be touching upon those differentials. If you have any thoughts or questions throughout, please pause the video and comment. Should you need to add to your comment, you can always edit it, giving us the opportunity to continue the dialogue in specific cases in the comments. Also, know that I have the orchid help form pinned in the comments if you want me to have a look at a specific case in your collection. With that out of the way, let's start with the easiest breakdown for cultivating all genuses of orchids in semi-hydro. Yes, you heard correctly, all from the ones that prefer to be mounted all the way to terrestrial orchids. One single denominator will give you the best understanding of growing orchids in semi-hydro. No matter if you choose to grow in organic media or inorganic media, because yes, you can apply the semi-hydro setup for organic media if you are prepared to repot more frequently because organic media will break down faster when kept wet all of the time. Semi-hydro not only implies but requires a reservoir filled with water or nutrient solution at the base of any container of choice at all times. The one denominator that you can rely on to get your judgment right, no matter the genus of orchid, is the structure and size of the root system of the orchid that is going to be grown in semi-hydroponics. Once you differentiate the root system of every orchid, you can easily determine what the media in the pot has to be like to accommodate that root system and ensure that the reservoir functions as it should. No matter the orchid, no matter the genus, the root system tells you pretty much everything you need to know and how you proceed with the media. So, orchids with a fine root system, i.e. Oncidiums, Tolumnias, Tenbrobium, some Cattleyas, some Lalias, etc., require a lot of water. For that reason, the media should be smaller in size to ensure maximum wicking efficacy to take place within the pot, if we are talking about potting up in inorganic media. Anything along the lines of small leka, small lava rock, as long as the media has either a high water retentive capacity or is a wicking medium, anything small will make the roots happy and grow well without desiccating. In the case of growing semi-hydroponically with organic media, the reverse may be true. And I say may, but I'm not going into all the environmental variables. The reason being, semi-hydroponics provides consistent access to water. A fine root system will be able to be potted up in larger media than if it were to be cultivated in a wet-dry cycle, where a lot of fine-rooted orchids are potted up in seedling bark, sphagnum mixed in, etc., etc. Should the orchid be potted up in organic media in a semi-hydro setup, then it is fine to go with medium-sized bark because organic media will absorb water very quickly and retain it. Following along the principle of the root system being the key clue to the size of the media, medium-sized root systems, for example, Oncidiums, Phalaenopsis, Cattleyas, Lalias, Slipper Orchids, and Grecoids, etc., 
when using inorganic media require medium sized media and if that is not available then some smaller sized media needs to be mixed in to fill in the blanks and establish the wicking within the pot and not letting the pot be too dry for lack of a better term reverse that if you choose to go with organic media medium sized bark can easily be switched to large sized bark any orchid with chunky fleshy roots, Cymbidiums, Oncidiums, Phalaenopsis, Cattleyas, some Lalias, need the large media if using inorganic media and large bark when it comes to organic media. So if me listing some genuses over and over again while going through the root size and media size preferences sounded tedious, it was meant to be repetitive. Because as I mentioned at the beginning, any orchid, any genus can be grown in semi-hydro. Granted, some orchids are more difficult to get right than others. That is where climate and grow conditions play a big part and understanding the life cycle of the orchid, which includes the growth habit of when the orchid produces roots and how the roots need to be cultivated in semi-hydro based on the environment and the climate where the orchids are grown in. But once new roots grow, any orchid can be potted up in semi-hydroponics and to be on the safe side, I recommend the same for terrestrial orchids. While they are more forgiving when it comes to their setup being changed when grown in a pot, the safest bet is to wait for new roots before proceeding just so that there is no setback. I just want to emphasize one thing. Semi-hydroponics is not exclusively for growing in inorganic media, despite what all the info out on the interweb states. To grow semi-hydroponically only means that the root system is in a pot that has constant water in a reservoir and the culture is not a wet-dry cycle. Inorganic media is popular for semi-hydroponics because it does not break down, whereas organic media's life cycle will be greatly reduced in this setup. That is why growers that cultivate plants in semi-hydroponics lean towards only using inorganic media. So I hope that this video answered the question and made sense of how to go about using semi-hydro as a setup for orchids. And if it prompted more questions, ask away. Thank you Schmel for your question. I appreciate the support on my channel with this kind of a dialogue, request, video, request, video. Love it. Thank you also so much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.